know something? I really love wrestling games. Wrestling games are actually some of my favorite kind of game. In fact, I own pretty much every SmackDown and SmackDown vs. Raw on the PlayStation 2. And in my opinion, one of the best and most polished wrestling games in history is WWE SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. Sure, there's plenty of people who love No Mercy better, and No Mercy is a great game, don't get me wrong. But to me, Here Comes the Pain, this is the real deal. It's got fun and challenging gameplay, an in-depth season, and great music. But to me, the best part of this game is actually its roster. There's so many established stars here. Like, you know, there's Triple H and Ric Flair, there's future Hall of Famers, and there's people who are even top stars today, like Randy Orton and John Cena. Plus, at this time in 2003, WWE had arguably the uh, best mid-card it would ever see. I mean, this was after the invasion, so there were so many WCW and ECW stars still in the company, and just so many great, talented performers. And another thing that this game did well was it was the first game to include Legends. Nowadays, no WWE game seems complete without including a few blasts from the past. And this game is where it all began. There's top stars of the 80s here. You got Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, George the Animal Steel, Hillbilly Jim, Sergeant Slaughter, Roddy Piper, The Legion of Doom, and so many more. Also, here's a few other fun facts about the roster. This game marked the first appearance of Rey Mysterio, Batista, John Cena, and quite a few others. This was also the only ever appearance of the Ultimo Dragon in any WWE game. And this would also be the final appearance of Test, Rikishi, or Val Venus in this series. Although Rikishi and Val Venus did return in WWE 13. So amazingly, there's a total of over 65 wrestlers on the roster. But did you know there were supposed to be more? Yeah, in fact, if you use a Game Shark or any other hacking device, you'll discover many more hidden wrestlers. That's actually the subject of today's video. The many removed characters of SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. Now, with wrestling games, there's always going to be usually one or two missing characters who are mostly missing due to them leaving the company before the release of the game. Like in the first SmackDown, it's missing Sean Stasiak and Jeff Jarrett, who left the company before the game's release. However, this game actually has a healthy plethora of unused stars, most of whom were likely excluded to safe space, not for any contractual beefs, because most of these people were still active on TV when the game came out. Now I'm going to go through some of these. Some of them are playable, some exist in just name only, and some of these are just weird. However, before we cover the characters, let's talk about the costumes. Quite a few characters in this game have an additional outfit. It's mostly just a recolored version of their older outfits. But there's actually a deleted Team Angle outfit. Kurt Angle, Charlie Haas, and Shelton Benjamin all share this secret costume. It's a Team Angle jacket and sweatpants. It's removed from the game, but it's still fully playable. And it was likely removed because Team Angle had actually broken up as a stable by the time this game came out. Both Haas and Benjamin had left the team and formed their own tag team. And Angle was back in singles competition. So I guess it really made no sense to keep the costume. Now back to the removed wrestlers. Now, a majority of these guys who were removed exist in name only. Their stats are all zero, and their select screen photo is just a question mark. The only information about them is their weight class, their gender, and finishers. That's really all that remains, just their names and movesets. Their models are not present on the disc, and you'll actually crash the game if you try and play as them. Also. For the guys I'm about to list, there is no beta footage or anything whatsoever. These characters include Billy Gunn, Billy Kidman, Bradshaw, Jamal, Rosie, Spike Dudley, Molly Holly, and William Regal. It's unknown why exactly these characters were removed. My theory is to save disc space, but it's hard to fathom as most of these guys were still pretty active in the company. I mean, you know, they weren't top tier talent main eventing every week, but they still were fairly prominent on TV. It's odd. 
but not unheard of. Lots of WWE games release characters during development. It appears these were all removed rather early in development, due to the lack of any information on them. Or maybe they were actually meant to appear, just the dev team never really got around to including them. It may have been time constraints considering it was only about a year after the last game that this one was released. But it's all up to speculation. But that's not all. There's also Jeff Hardy. Pretty much the same story as the other guys. No stats, no model, no picture. The only difference is that he actually appears briefly during an early trailer for the game. Although, he was likely removed because he left WWE during development. Another weird example is Hulk Hogan. Hogan, unlike the others I've mentioned, actually has a profile picture in the select screen. It also seems like there were two incarnations of Hulk, one for his 2003 appearance, and another modeled after his 80s appearance. So it's most likely that Hogan was supposed to be an active roster member and a playable legend, like how Undertaker appears as his current biker gimmick and his old school gimmick from the 90s. Also unlike the others, Hogan actually has all of his stats filled out. Because of this, it seems Hogan was removed rather late into development in his Ultimate Warrior. He, like Hulk Hogan, has a select screen photo and filled out stats. He also appears to be removed late into development for the same reasons as Hulk. The reason for his removal is most likely because he actually filed a lawsuit against the company at this time. Now, there actually is one character who was removed. Al Snow. He has no profile picture, no stats, nothing. So why is he getting special mention? Because he's actually playable. Yes, if you hack the game and select Al Snow, you can actually play as The Rock. No, I'm not kidding. If you select him, you'll be able to play as The Rock. Now, granted, you have to turn off entrances, and if you do, you can actually play as Al Snow. Technically, you're playing as The Rock. But he has a very generic moveset. It's not The Rock's moveset, it's a very generic one. This is weird because all the other characters will freeze the game if you try and play them. But Al Snow doesn't. But why? I don't really know. I don't know why he uses The Rock as a placeholder either. I mean, if you have a theory, please leave a comment below, I'd love to hear it. But wait, there's actually more. There's one removed wrestler that nobody ever really mentions. Because he's not technically removed. He's in the game, but he isn't selectable. I know what you're thinking. You probably think I mean one of those non-playable characters in season mode, like a security guards or something, right? No. I mean, nobody ever expects people like that to be playable, because they just serve as cutscene fodder and nothing more. However, there is someone in the game who is an actual, real-life wrestler. He has a full model, but is technically unselectable. That being Jerry Lawler. Yes, he is in the game. You can't select to play as him in any mode, however he is in the game. If you play a season mode, there's a certain storyline you'll get if you meet these conditions. First of all, you have to be on Raw. You have to be a face. And the storyline features you getting attacked by a group of heels. And they will face you in a handicap match. However, on commentary, Jerry Lawler will remark that he is fed up with it and he decides to be your partner in the match. Just watch this.
He has no entrance, never appears backstage, he just participates in a match in season mode. And as you can see, he has a full move set and even has the pile driver as a finisher. It's so weird, they, they went through the trouble of making a full model for Jerry Lawler, but never implemented him in the actual game. I don't know why they did, they just did. Another thing, if you'll notice, his model is actually very low quality. Look at him compared to Goldberg. He kind of resembles that model of the referee if you do that glitch, where the uh, referee wins the first blood match. This is pretty much the only time Jerry Lawler will show up in any physical form, not counting commentary. I mean, did they forget to remove him? Was he originally intended to be a playable character or a legend? I don't get it. But if you do want to get the storyline, it generally happens in November on the in-game calendar, or whenever you're in Memphis in season mode. Also, you cannot play as him in this match. He is computer controlled. Also, his finisher is a fairly unique pile driver. This exact pile driver is unselectable for created wrestlers and seems to exist only for this character model of Jerry. Plus, there is really nobody else like this in the entire game as far as I know. Now, granted, there are characters who appear backstage, like Jim Ross, Jonathan Coachman, Michael Cole, and a few others. But still, those guys are just treated as backstage staff and only appear in cutscenes to push the storyline and to help push you to the next storyline. They don't really appear in matches or anything. Lawler, however, never makes any physical appearances save for this one match and the cutscene after. It makes no sense why, and the storyline is actually pretty rare to come across if you play the game. But if you have a theory on what's going on, why this exists, or if you've actually gotten this storyline in a playthrough, comment below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This has been the Blockinator.